Hey everybody, it's Derek Kamartin from CodeOpinion.com. How do you implement optimistic concurrency in an HTTP API? Well, I'll show a couple different ways using the e-tag header as well as using hypermedia. To illustrate how you can do this with different types of data stores, I'm going to use Cosmos DB as a document store as well as Event Store DB as an event stream. This video is brought to you by Event Store DB, the stream database built from the ground up for event sourcing, CQRS, and event-driven microservices. For more info on Event Store DB, check out the link in the description. So when I'm talking about optimistic concurrency, what am I talking about exactly? Just the fact if you're developing an HTTP API and you're dealing with concurrent requests, in my case, I'm just showing two here. Let's say we have one client make a request to your HTTP API and another uh, client at that time, maybe concurrently a few milliseconds afterwards, whatever the case may be, they both interact with that HTTP API. It has to get some data from the database and return it to that particular client. Let's say we're talking about a product here. So we have some SKU of ABC123. That's kind of the identifier. And we also return back a version. Now this could be a number, it could be some date time, but something that uniquely identifies kind of the state of what it is that you're returning. So the problem occurs here is when we have a client that then say does some interaction with that particular resource or something that's ultimately gonna change the data related to our product in that case. So we have this queue, we're doing some say product uh, inventory adjustment here where we're adding the quantity of 10. And what we're saying is, well, that data that we got back initially was at version 15. So we need to pass that along to the HTTP API so that it can make the request to the database. Now using our data store, whatever the case may be, again, I'm gonna show uh, Cosmos DB and uh, Event Store DB to doing this, is that we're gonna tell it, here's the data that we wanna change, assuming we're at the same version that we originally got, which is version 15. So that works fine, we're still at version 15, but then we have that other client that tries to make some type of state change here, and it thinks we're at version 15, but because that first client actually won technically its request, now say we're at version 16. So this request will fail because we're no longer at the version that we thought we were. So this is implementing optimistic concurrency. So let's see how we can pass this version around. Now, like I said, this doesn't need to be necessarily a version number, doesn't need to be an integer, it can be various things. Um, so let's see how Cosmos does it. And let's see how Event Store does it and how e we can implement it in our own HTTP API. All the code I'm about to illustrate is available to my developer level members on YouTube and Patreon. So if you're interested in joining, getting access to my Discord server as well, check out the links in the description. So first let's look at Cosmos DB because it shows how it ultimately uses the e-tag header to illustrate, to provide back to your client what kind of the version is of that document. So I'm just using the uh, the emulator here just locally and I've created this database and this collection called orders and then I'm just showing one particular document here. So what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to show you that in Cosmos they actually have an HTTP API that you can leverage that does this that uses an e-tag header to show you what the version is. So I've requested this particular uh, document that I have here with this GUID as the ID and you can see within the body it acts, has the underscore e-tag but as well as in the header in the response, it also has the e-tag. So this is the same e-tag that's actually in the body. And what happens here is what we can do with this is that we can send, when we send a request to, for example, update this document, we can provide an if match header with that e-tag that if the e-tag is changed, uh, meaning the version has changed of that document, the actual request for will fail. So you can do that same type of behavior within the API that they provide of the SDK that looks something like this. So I'm creating my Cosmos uh, client. I'm getting that particular container, uh, that collection of orders. And what I'm doing in this example here is I'm just, I'm creating an item. So I'm just creating a new order here that just has an ID and a customer just for illustration purposes, nothing much going on here. And then I'm reading that particular um, item, that new order that I just created. And then I'm changing the, the, the status here to processing. From there, what I'm doing is I'm calling an upsert in their API and I'm trying to update this uh, new order. But what I pass is, is I pass this if match e tag from the one we read. So this is gonna return this successfully and we're gonna be able to update because nothing has changed. That e tag's still the same. But the moment we've done this, uh, this upsert is that it's gonna change the e-tag. If we were to refetch um, this item out, this document out, the e-tag would be different. 
But because I'm not doing that and I'm trying to do an upsert again with the existing e tag, this actual request will fail. So let's give this a run. All right, so I added a breakpoint on the first upsert, and this is actually going to succeed. That worked. And then again, this is going to fail now because the e tag is actually different. So if I step over this, now we can see that we get our exception, our Cosmos exception, and we get back a HTTP status code of 412, which is a precondition failed. So that's how ultimately uh, Cosmos TV does it, is again, just using the e-tag header and then an if match uh, on the actual request. In this case, it's probably a put um, to make sure that our e-tag is still the same. So now I'm using EventStoreDB as my data store, and I have this event stream for warehouse product ABC123. So if I want to use e-tags and it's not immediately built in, how do I do that? So what I have here are two routes that I defined. The first one is just to get back a particular product. So I've developed this event store stream factory that I've created. And really what it does is it basically gets the stream that you want, replays all the events and gives me back an aggregate, which is our product. And what I'm doing from there is I'm returning the version a part of that and I'm adding that as the e-tag. So with our event stream, the very first we add to a stream is going to be version zero, essentially index zero. And then every event we append to our stream is going to get incremented from there. So if we add uh, append another event, that's going to be now version one. So then that's what I'm doing with my e tag, just returning that integer value. And then I'm just returning the body, which contains the SKU, the quantity on hand. And I just added the version so you can see it. From there, I added another route to do an inventory adjustment, which is basically going to add an inventory adjusted event to our event stream. So the same type of thing, I'm getting out our product aggregate and replaying all the events. I'm calling in, uh, adjust inventory with what the payload was. And then the key part here is I'm getting back that if match header. So in the request that I'm going to send for this post call, I'm going to provide the if match header with the e tag that we got. And if I didn't get one at all, I'm just going to return a 412 precondition failed. And then what I'm doing is I'm taking that e tag, assuming it was provided, and I'm passing it to my save method of my stream. So let's take a look at the implementation there. So what happens is with event store DB, when you append an event to your stream, you can provide it what the expected version is. So I'm passing that all the way through from what our e tag was. So if the expected version has changed, meaning something else concurrently has added, appended something to our stream, this will fail. So let's give this a run so we can see how this works. All right, so I'm running the app and I'm just gonna make a call from Postman. So here's my call. I get my back my SKU, ABC123, quantity 30, version two. And if I look at the headers, I can see my E tag here of two. Now for that other route for doing the inventory adjustment, what I'm providing is my if match value of what I returned from my e tag, which was two. And then in my body, I'm just sending the quantity and reason that we were requesting. So now I'll send that request and we can see I'm breaking here. I added a breakpoint. So I'll just kind of step through this that we're doing our inventory adjustment. We're getting our if match value, which is set to two. And I can pass this all the way through and that's going to save correctly. And I can just return a 204 and we're all good. But now if we look, and I recall our get, our e tag, our version is now at three. If I don't provide three as my if match, now I'm going to fail and I'm going to get back a 412. So we're going to step through this. We can see that we still provided two, which is incorrect because we're now at three. So when I save, I'm actually going to fail with a wrong expected version exception from uh, event store DB. And then I can return the 412. So there's our 412 uh, precondition failed. So another way of doing this is with hypermedia. So instead of using the e tag header and if match, what we can do is provide the client through the body, the different actions that they can take. And with those actions, we can provide them with the URI, which can contain the version in that URI. So what that looks like is instead of returning the heat of the e tag, which we still could, instead, what I'm doing is I'm providing this collection, this array of commands. I'm giving it a name, which is an action of inventory adjustment, and I'm providing it the URI, which contains the SKU and the version of the product at that time. Then I can have a separate route, which has the SKU that has the version as segments a part of that route, and provide that in our save with the version that's from the route. So let's give this a run and see how this looks. So in Postman, I'm gonna make a call again back to our route so we can see now we're at version three, and now I have this collection of commands for our inventory adjustment. If I click on the URI, 
I can actually get a new request here. I can change this to post, add in my body, which was just JSON data here. So I'll paste that in. There's our data I'm pasting. And then we can send that request. So now I'm breaking at my new route and we can see that our version is being passed to part of the route segment here. And I can just go all the way through and save our product, which works. So the same type of behavior as what we were doing before, but rather we're using hypermedia, providing through the response, providing the client with the URIs, those URIs contain the version instead of using the E tag. If you want another example of this, but in TypeScript, Node and Express, check out this post. I'll have a link in the description by Oscar Dudich. That's pretty much illustrating the same type of thing I'm talking about, how to use E tags for optimistic concurrency, and as well as it's using event store DB as its data store. So hopefully this illustrated that it doesn't really matter what type of data store you're using. You could be using a document store, an event store, a relational database. They all provide mechanisms to do this. The key part about it is how do you want to exchange that information? Do you want to use the e tag header when you perform gets to return that data to your clients and then have your clients send an if match header with that e tag value? Or would you do rather prefer something like hypermedia to make it a little bit more transparent so they don't necessarily need to think about it? If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any thoughts or questions, make sure to leave a comment and please subscribe for more videos on software architecture and design. Thanks.